in Adventist church history. Today, today we will continue to talk about 1888, but the time after 1888. <clears throat> Thank you to Rias for helping translate these slides today. <laughs> yes. Let's give her a little clap. <laughs> yes, hopefully this is helpful. Here you can see the 1888 General Conference at Minneapolis. Here's a picture of those people that were there in front of the uh, building they used for the conference. You can see there's kids there and adults, so everyone was participating. There's a lot of them there too. All right, who's this guy? We looked at him. Yeah, Wagner. It's Wagner. Ellet Wagner. He was the doctor, remember? He was the doctor. He was a doctor. Medi medical doctor. Actual medical doctor. And I don't know if I told this story, but I should tell it anyway. The way that Wagner got into this whole 1888 conference. And the study of righteousness by faith. The study of Romans and Galatians. Wagner was in a meeting, a camp meeting. Good, I told you. Uh, I'll say it again because it just. I like this story. While he was sitting there in that conference, listening to the Word of God, I don't know what passage was being read. They were talking about Jesus. And while he was listening, he almost went into vision. Not the same way that Ellen might do. But have you ever been able to see something in your mind's eye so clearly? <clears throat> Maybe you can imagine something. Like your favorite food. Or a moment from your childhood with your mother. Or your like a strong memory, you can almost see it. While he was listening, he saw Jesus hanging on the cross. And it was so clear to him that Jesus didn't just die for the world, he died for Elliot. It went right to his heart. He loved Jesus. And he knew Jesus loved him. Who's this? Jones. Alonzo T. Jones. 18 And these two people are very important because they had a message we studied from Romans and Galatians. Who is this? Mother White. Yeah, Mother White. Sure. Many people called her Mother White. Uh, Ellen White. Yeah, there are many pictures of Ellen White. This is one of the better ones. Cameras got better as um, she got older. 
Okay, we're going to be mostly talking about her in today's lecture. What is the role of the spirit of prophecy? Especially during the time of 1888. What happened? What side did Elmite take? How did the people react? To the things that she was saying? What can we learn from her story? In 1888, many leaders despised these two young preachers, Jones and Wyman. Can you guys see the slides really well? I will try to send these on WhatsApp. Hopefully they come from Mexico. Why did they despise these two young preachers? Well, they were young and new. They seemed to be arrogant and think they were smarter than everyone else. And they believed that the message of righteousness by faith was being neglected by Adventists. This is a cool thing, I can change it. I need flight here. Maybe it was my mistake, I don't know. How's that? Good? Man, okay. Were they really arrogant? A little bit. So, Jones and Wagner, where were they before 1888? After Jones and Wagner, what state? What state is The camp, the conference was in Minnesota, but they were working at the Review and Herald. Where? They were, yes, California, which is all the way on the west side, far away. And they found truth in the Bible. They wanted to share it. They realized that the Adventist church was Laodicea. And they thought, oh, I know what we'll do. We'll start publishing our ideas and bring a big reform to the church. When you see problems, what's the first thing that you should do when you have problems with other people's ideas? Who knows what Matthew 18 teaches? <laughs> Does any of my students know what Matthew chapter 18 teaches? about resolving conflict. Like if there's a problem then you uh, get some people from the church as a so, so first you do what? Yes. And then uh, bring some people from the church as like two or three. Two or three. Mm -hmm. And then if, then if the problem is not getting fixed, then you will be fixed. Yes, exactly. Well, no, no, not yet. Okay. No. There's another one. You bring it before the church. Oh, then if they don't repent, you 
then if they don't repent, then they're just not ashamed. Then the problem is, the, the problem always gets fixed. Always gets fixed. Yes, follow me. You can share with us. Can you share with the group? Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. Two. If he will not hear, take with you one or two more. Verse 17. Number 3. If he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. Number 4. If he refuses to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax Here was a mistake of Jones and Wagner. Instead of talking with the church leaders, they started to kind of fight them indirectly. They started writing things in the newspaper, the Signs of Times. They, they started to put their new ideas there. They were good ideas. They weren't perfect ideas, but neither was the other side. But just because you have something that's right, just because you have the truth, does that mean you can share it in any way you want to? Thank you, Thank you. Just because you have the truth, does that mean you can share it in any way you want to? No. Because you'll if you share it and you're not careful, you will cause people to be angry at you. That's what happens. Now, the other side wasn't perfect either. Just because someone else makes a mistake, should you get angry at them? Think about if Jesus went to the cross and was like, Oh, you guys are all mean to me. I didn't do anything wrong. Did you do that? He said, forgive them, Father. That's the way Christian should be. <clears throat> Ellen White wrote some things about these men. Wagner and Jones. She said that they should not be so quick to publish their ideas. But also she said they have light from God. Now, remember these two people? Who are these? Okay. Okay. 
This is Uriah Smith. Who is this? Butler. Butler is the General Conference President. Uriah Smith's the editor of the Review. Yeah, the Review and Herald. These leaders were upset. Because they thought Jones and Wagner are these new young creatures bringing some new light. And they heard someone say, Ellen White likes these guys. Is that true? Yeah, she liked them. But she didn't say they were perfect. Well, because Ellen White said something that they did not like, they began to doubt Ellen White. They said she must not be inspired. They said, so I'm, I'm saying what Butler and Smith were saying. She must not be inspired by what? By the Holy Spirit. They basically said that because Ellen White is picking favorites with Jones and Wagner, she must not be inspired with these. They were doubting Ellen White. Do you think they'd test her and find out if she was a true prophet? They were church leaders. They believed very strongly that Ellen White was a prophet. But they began to doubt. Let me talk a little bit about doubt. The Bible says, test all things. That means that don't just take somebody's word for it, make sure that they prove it. What, what kind of doubt did they begin to have? They weren't doubting that she was a prophet. They were doubting her messages. They said, okay, she hears messages from God. But maybe she mixes a little bit of her own messages. Is that the way prophets work? Let's look at our Bibles. To the book of, in the book of Numbers. Do you remember Balaam the prophet? Balaam was a prophet of God. A true prophet. But he had a problem. He was selfish. He was not a perfect prophet. In fact, there's no such thing as a perfect prophet except for Jesus. But when God's prophets have a message from the Lord, does the message get messed up? Can, can the prophet make the word of God fail? Yes, 
Yes or no? Magina. Correct. When God sends a message through his prophets, that message is going to get through. Look in Numbers chapter 22. <laughs> the king of Moab wanted Balaam to curse Israel. But what did Balaam say to the people? Let's look at verse 12. This is what God says to Balaam. Talking about and telling, telling Balaam about the messages from Moab. You shall not go with them. You shall not curse the people for they are blessed. Did Balaam want to curse the people? Yes, he did. Because if Balaam cursed Israel, he would get a big reward from Moab. Look at verse 18. Balaam says, Though Balak, Balak is the king of Moab, Though Balak were to give me the house full of silver and gold, I could not go beyond the word of the Lord my God to do less than that. You know that Balaam tried to curse the people many times. But every, every single time that he tried to curse the people, only blessings came out of his mouth. That's because even when God's prophets are not perfect, God's message will go through. Uriah Smith was spreading doubt about this. And we will see that this had very bad results. One last verse and say it. A promise for us. Isaiah 55 verse 11. This is about the word of God. When God speaks through the Bible, it's his word. When God speaks through his prophets, it's also his word. Verse 11 says, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what it means, and it shall prosper in the name of which I send it. God's word doesn't fail. But if we doubt his word, and if we doubt his prophets, we are in danger of losing it. There were others. I believe that Uriah Smith was the main one. But once one person spreads doubt, then it becomes the main one. 
So what's going to happen at this conference? What's going to happen at this conference? Father in heaven, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your love. We strengthen our faith in you. In Jesus' name.